Well, folks, we're moving right along with application season. At our office, we have application season, planning season, hunting season. And we're about midway through application season right now, and Colorado is the state we want to talk about. Before we get any further, the deadline for Colorado, April 4th, 2023, 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Now, in Colorado, we're only going to cover elk, deer, and pronghorn. They let you apply for moose, mountain goat, Rocky Mountain bighorn, and desert bighorn, but those are on a completely different point in other system. So if you want all the details on that, go over to Go Hunt. They, in their strategy articles, they go through all of it for those, uh, I guess it'd be four species. Um, and if you do, go over there, sign up for Insider, use promo code Randy, they'll give you $50 a gear in their gear shop. As always, these videos are brought to you by Go Hunt because they want you to know all this stuff. And if you ever watch my videos about which states provide the best value, you will know that I always put Colorado at the top when it comes to mule deer. So if you're gonna apply or build points for mule deer, you may as well be throwing in the hat for elk and pronghorn because it only costs an extra 10 bucks to build a point or to actually apply. So Colorado says you have to have what's called a minimum base license in order to apply. And that is always the annual small game license. And this year it costs almost $94. And then they make you buy a habitat stamp, which is $11.50. And then for every species you apply for, deer, elk, or pronghorn, it's another $10 per application. Now that's $10 whether you apply for a point or whether you actually make an application. Colorado has this uh, CPI index for the price of their tags. So by statute, their tags go up a slight amount every year based on inflation. Well, we know inflation was really high in 2022, so the tag fee increases in Colorado for 2023 are higher than they have been in the past. So here's your cost. Your deer tag is gonna cost you a little over $456, an elk tag is gonna be almost $761, and your pronghorn tag is gonna be a little over $456. Now, even though I told you we're not going to get into moose, goat, sheep, all that stuff, the price for those is $2,544. As far as youth, they have some really good pricing and some really good chances. Just know they have to have passed hunter ed and they have to turn 12 by the last day of the season that they apply for and they can't be out there hunting until they're 12. In just about all units for elk, deer, and pronghorn, non-residents get 35% over a third of their limited entry tags go to non-residents. Super, super generous. The most generous of every Western state. Now there's some tags or some hunt codes that are called hybrid draw, where instead of the split being 65-35, it goes to 80 for residents and 20 for non-residents. And the rule there is if resident points required to draw were six or more for the previous three-year average, I believe it is, then the non-resident quota drops from 35% down to 20%. And if you go to the regulations, they list which units every year we have a lower allocation of tags. Now, it used to be, prior to this year, that for pronghorn, non-residents didn't have a cap. Starting this year, Pronghorn now falls under that 35% cap. Let's talk about the point system. Deer, elk, pronghorn, they're all on a true preference point draw. The person with the most points gets the tag. Points mean a lot in Colorado. 100% of the limited entry tags go on a preference point draw. For Colorado, every year their number of applicants has been increasing, but not as much as other states. Uh, the total non-resident application pool over the last five draw cycles has went up 12%, a little over 2% per year growth. Colorado had 105,000 of us apply for the 22,700 elk tags. So that means we're going to have a draw rate of about 
But over here, we have a huge pile of point buyers. 63,800 non-residents just bought points. And that's what causes this thing called point creep. Even though this year, Colorado increased, or well, in 2022, Colorado increased non-resident limited entry elk tag totals by about, mm, not quite 5%, maybe 4%. We have so many people in the Colorado system that started, I think, in 88. So what's that mean? We're 35 years into the Colorado system. We have a lot of people with high points who can jump in there when they see it. Okay, I got enough points. I'm jumping in. And they don't even show up in the draw odds that you normally look at. They're just over here, off to the side. So be aware of that because that creates a lot of problems. Here's some things to be thinking about for Colorado and why you probably should think about burning your points. Now, if you don't want to, I get it. But I burn my Colorado points every three to five years. Their limited entry hunts, even the ones with, that require fewer points, are still pretty darn good hunts. So I'd rather go four or five times over the course of 20 years than to wait and go once every 20 years. The thing that might change, Colorado has been holding these scoping sessions about possibly getting rid of the over-the-counter elk tag. Now think about if Colorado gets rid of that or somehow tightens the, the amount of non-residents who can go do that. So here's the strategy a lot of people do. They go hunt over the counter and they keep building points and building points and building points while they're hunting over the counter. Well, if Colorado changes it that you got to draw as a non-resident, well, now that the tag numbers are gonna go way down, the number of people who have to burn their points to actually go hunt is gonna be a whole lot higher, and that's going to change draw odds. So if you're sitting on a ton of points, when changes like that happen, it deflates the value of the points you're sitting on. So, think about it. If you wanna collect points, knock yourself out, but I think there's gonna be some big changes coming in Colorado over the next few years. And those who've been burning their points and anticipating that are probably the ones who will be least affected by whatever changes happen. Now, as far as hunting Colorado, you know, having land to hunt on, there's 23 million acres of BLM and Forest Service. So finding a place to hunt, especially in the western half of Colorado, is not an issue. Then we have these little powder blue looking squares on our map. Those are Colorado State Trust Lands. You cannot hunt those without permission of the lessee. So whoever's leasing that ground controls access to those state lands. Now I think Colorado Parks and Wildlife leases about 12% of the total lands, uh, the state lands in Colorado. So the other 88%, you need permission from whoever's leasing it. And if you go to the Colorado Parks and Wildlife website, they have a list of which, which of those state lands they are leasing. Like I said, for elk, there's 90 plus units that are over the counter for archery, second rifle and third rifle, but all deer and all pronghorn is on a limited entry draw. So uh, if you're born after January 1, 1949, you need hunter ed. Uh, and in Colorado, you have to have your hunter ed certificate with you in the field. So don't, don't leave it at home in the file cabinet. You can return a tag in Colorado. It's really complicated. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details of that in terms of dates and how you do it. When these tags get returned, I think it's starting about the second week of August. They start putting them up on this first come, first serve kind of thing once a week. It's chaotic. I've, I've never been able to solve the mystery of how you get one. So, uh, but just know that it's there. Um, if I could, I, I'd leave you with a, probably a pointer for each of the three species, deer, elk, and pronghorn, that I think will help you a little bit to uh, maybe draw a tag, uh, maybe use your points in a way that you get the most value out of them. And for elk, I always tell people, unless you're already way up in the point, point pile, don't shoot for the moon. Look at these first rifle hunts or the fourth rifle hunts or some one of the limited entry draw hunts that don't take a ton of points 
and go hunt every three, four, or five years, you, you're going to have a lot of fun. I've done it. And these, you know, say it's a first rifle hunt or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'll use an example of a first rifle hunt. And maybe it's a unit that has over-the-counter elk for the second, third rifle. Yeah, you're not going to be hunting monster bulls of any way, shape, or form. But they control the number of people in the woods at that time because it's a limited entry draw. So the quality of the experience is way higher. As far as deer, keep an eye on the season dates. Colorado does this five-year season structure. So they set the season dates five years at a time. So right now, starting, I think it was starting in 2020, they really moved the deer dates back into the rut, deeper into the rut, into November. So if you got some deer points, Think about using them. Even the, the second deer season, I think, ends November 5th this year, if I remember right. There's still some rutting that's starting to happen, and the bucks are starting to posture and get near the does in that second rifle hunt. Well, if you look at the amount of points it takes to draw a second rifle hunt, it's not very many. And you're hunting the same herd as units that might take 10 to 15 to 20 points to draw the third or 20 plus points to draw the fourth. Now pronghorn, this year with the big change, where non-residents are restricted to 35% of the pronghorn tags when we never had that restriction before, expect the number of points required for non-residents to go boom, right? Because now, instead of maybe some unit we drew 50 or 70% of the tags, now we can't get more than 35%. So this year, expect huge point jumps for non-residents in pronghorn, which on the flip side of that says you should probably be building points for pronghorn if you haven't been. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Hopefully that explains Colorado in a real concise way, as concise as I can be. Uh, if you want way more detail than this, if you want all the draw odds, you want strategy articles, you want maps, desktop, mobile maps, all that, and you want points in their amazing gear shop, go to Go Hunt, sign up using promo code Randy for Go Hunt's Insider, and they'll give you $50 of credit in their gear shop. Remember the deadline, April 4th, Colorado. Don't miss it. Good luck.